Hello, good afternoon, Lagos. Good afternoon, world. You're watching Plus TV Africa, and the program is Sports Business with Urufo Izaga. I'm Urufo, and I'd like to welcome all of you um, to this program that, um, for the next 45 minutes or so. We're going to be talking sports business with some of the biggest players in the industry, and there's a lot you're going to hear that might... Um, actually change the way you look at sports and possibly create an opportunity of, or two for you and your organization. Sports is big business, big business, all right? But it looks like in this part of the world, we haven't really read the memo. But countries, companies, and individuals around the world are making a killing from sports. They're making big money. They're engaging their populations. They're creating a civilization where people understand the need for rules, why they should follow rules, how they should you know, react when they lose. It's not every time you, you, you have to fight to the death. Sometimes you lose and you get back and then you fight again because you know that tomorrow or next season or next tournament, you can fight your way back, your way back to the top. So those are values that sports creates in a society um, in addition to, to you know, creating lots of jobs and, and um, building a country's um, GDP, you know, experts will tell you that um, sports contribute about at least 1% to a country's GDP on the average. All right? So if, if this were the case of Nigeria, for instance, uh, sports, if sports contributed 1% to our GDP, we would be talking about a $5 billion annual industry. You know, so it's something that we need to look at, not just as government, but the business community as well. We all, all have to think anew about sports and how, what it represents to our civilization. All right. Um, we're going to be talking to some of the, the business leaders, the government leaders, and you know, individuals that have already seen the opportunity in sports and they're already uh, making their own moves. Um, so we're going to especially be focused on the younger generation because um, they, that's the generation that, that uh, took Nigerian music and made it global. They took Nigerian movies, they made it global. They took Nigerian technology, they become, became, became global players. If they take Nigerian sports, as some of them are beginning to do, they can take sports you know, really global. Today I have in the studio with with me, um, somebody who understands sports from whatever angle you want to look at it from. He's played in the private sector for a long time in sports. He's played in the, in, in the, higher, high, in the highest, maybe well, in the very high offices in government. And he should know how to you know, um, let us understand sports business you know, in the way that it happens in Nigeria today and in the way that we can take it forward. Um, in the studio is um, Mr. Shola Ayekbeku. Pleasure. He's, uh, he, he's, the former, he's the former executive chairman of the Lagos State Sports Commission. And um, he, well, he says he's back to private practice. Yes. How, how long he's going, for how long, we don't know. Yeah. And then joining us in the program later will be um, Mrs. Um, Aisha Shaibu. She, she is the CEO of SWA Sports Agency, the forward-thinking agency that is right now uh, driving uh, the conversations around sports as big business um, at the highest levels of, of government. All right, So people are getting interested. The minister recently went to visit Tonelumelu. Tonelumelu himself posted about how he wants to get, um, wants to invest in Nigerian football, you know. So it is a big scenario. When the big fish get in, you know, uh, you small fish. If you don't get in now, you, you, you might not be able to get in again, you know. So um, let me welcome Shola to the program and then we can, we can generally get today going. But for the next 45 minutes, I would implore you to stay tuned because um, there's a lot that Shola is going yeah. to say that I'm sure you know uh, hi Shola how are you I'm very well thank you and you not too bad not too bad Shola yeah. you know um, I have seen you I met you as I think I, I met you as the, the executive chairman of Lagos yes, State um, yes, uh, Sports yeah. uh, Commission and we had some interesting um, engagements and everything Absolutely. 
now you're you're out of there. You know, I want to know. You know, um, tell us what the next steps are for you, <laughs> and then we'd like to get your experience um, as as um, chairman of the of of um, the LSSC. Yeah. So how let. Well, uh, uh, if I start, I think we won't, we won't leave this to the maybe in the next 12 hours, but well, I'll just try and summarize a bit. Um, it was a very eye-opening experience okay. uh, for, for, for about four years. I learned a whole lot about um, how to most importantly get things done mm. within government. I learned some basic rules at, as well. Mm. Um, I, I was one of the fortunate ones uh, for whom the governor understood to a very large extent to what he felt sports should be doing mm. and backed me, I mean, all the way. So it was, it, it was, I won't say it was easy, but it was, it was easy enough to, um, to get ideas I had in mind going and um, try and push on or push on a few things and get some things done. Um, so uh, with very little force. I mean, there's usual, there, there are usual hazards along the way. I can you, imagine. Yeah, you learn to, uh, to <laughs> manipulate and yeah. overcome. But the main thing is, I mean, you can't, I mean, I've been on TV and done a little criticism of government prior to my appointment. So um, you could remain a talker yeah. and not be a doer. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Mm. after your tenure, people would ask questions and say, well, you had a chance. What did you do with it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but thankfully, I can look back to quite a number of things that were able to change fundamentally um, and uh, ensure that um, some basic mindsets who are repositioned, let me mm. put it that way. And uh, we got quite a number of things done. Uh, for example, uh, we averaged, apart from the COVID year, we averaged, averaged about 115 events a year. Never wow. been done before. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean, things like that were, were going on. And we had to change some, 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 very positive, some very fundamental things. Like, for example, training. Do you know that prior to the, to the Songwulu government um, uh, start um, um, era, no sports um, official have been trained by government for over 30 years. Wow. Yes. So, so you can imagine the, you can juxtapose it with what we all expected our citizens of, of Lagos State of Nigeria, juxtapose it with, with the, the knowledge base that, that is on ground that's supposed to handle these same matters. And then, and then you find that there's such a wide disparity and you, and you wonder where to start because we have so many plans. Oh, want to do this, want to do that. And then we now talk with the people who are supposed to do that. They're mm. like, you can actually like, what is the guy talking about? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. everything had to change to the training to, and all that. So yeah, it was a good experience. Oh, okay. So what would you think the culture, um, the understanding of sports um, is like in, in, in the Lagos State government? Uh, do they understand sports as, as um, a social activity, an engagement activity, or do they see it as, as business? Largely, Nigeria at large sees sports as, as entertainment. Mm. As something that is recreational, not even entertainment, mm. because entertainment makes money. Mm. But it's more recreational. It's like sports has been done in favor mm. to exist. Yeah, yeah. That's how sports is viewed all over. And very few people uh, um, have the right um, aptitude and attitude towards mm -hmm. sports. But again, remember it was just two or three years ago that sports was officially recognized as a business in Nigeria. Yeah. And that was led by people who had that mindset to, to get this thing done first legally and constitutionally. Otherwise, nothing will begin to change the minds of people or the, the general uh, leadership. But I, but, but I would have thought that in Lagos states, you know, this is the most advanced state that yeah. we have. This is the state that that uh, hosts the, the brightest Nigerians that we have. How come nobody has caught on to, to you know, what sport is and what sport can actually do for, for there's a slide I'm going to put up uh, soon to show you what, like in the EU region, you know, what sports uh, contributes to their GDP and to jobs. Do you understand? If we understand, un understand these things in this part, wouldn't the government be better off? I mean, wouldn't society be better off? Um, uh, I agree with you. You see, but, but it takes leadership to know what to do. Okay. So if you're, and again, that's why I commend, I don't sound like a broken record, but that's why I commend um, the, the current governor. Governor, okay. Yeah. How many governors have you heard? Well, I've not heard many governors, if any, who understood that sports has to be used in a certain way mm. to benefit citizens. Because when we had the talk when I started, 
all he kept asking me is, okay, so how, what he has his own vision of what sports should be. Mm. How would you do fit into that vision? Mm. And he kept asking me, so what next? And what next? And what next? Mm. So once you keep, once you have somebody that understands that aspect of things, it's easier to lead to change. Mm. For, so for example, by the time we discussed that, so we thought that, look, you have to ensure that some basic principles in place before sports can become what it is. Mm. If there is no policy or legal framework mm -hmm. uh, guarding and guiding sports as a, a, as a business, mm. it's not what's going to happen, you know? And that's exactly uh, what it was done nationally. However, Lagos also has its own draft policy mm. in place, but it's okay. not been passed yet into law. So, so Lagos has been doing those things. And it's important that you do the fundamentals first, for example, I don't know if you are aware, Lagos is building eight brand new stadia right now. Because about the, time. Sorry? It's about down time. Uh, five should be finished this year, mm. going to the, uh, the schedule, and three will be finished by next year. Uh, along with the mm -hmm. renovation of the uh, Bible Stadium that is almost done. Mm. So the pitch is going to be changed, mm. the tracks are going to be changed, mm. and, um, and all those other stadia are not massive stadia like, um, like testing, but they're community stadia where you can events can happen, things can happen all around the state mm. and then before you come to the center. So people don't have to come, keep coming to the center. You can, you can um, uh, discover talent where they are. Mm. You can run certain competitions before they come to the center. And at that time, they don't have to mm. because you are taking the grassroots. Um, you have a place for the grassroots to be found and all that. So, so, that's, so that's, that, that shows understanding of what needs to be done. And mm. all this started in this government mm. over the last four years. Mm. So, so he has shown that. Also, I'll just give you an example. I think it was before we started the show okay. about training. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or was it during oh, the show? Do, 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 do. show. So when you have somebody who understood that, look, we already have, there, are, there are already approved uh, programs for school sports development, for mm. da, da, da. But by the time we saw that there was a massive gap between the knowledge base mm. and the current, um, and the current um, um, uh, headmasters head, or uh, sports people in the state, we had to start training. We couldn't just begin to implement because there'd be such a big gap, a huge gap in the execution and the plans. So. You know, <laughs> you know when you say this thing, I worry. And I'll tell you why I worry, Shola. Yeah. Again, back to the fact that you're the most advanced state in this country. Yeah. Yeah. So you should be the leading light. Yes, if we are the leading know? light. You should be. We are the leading light. That's, that's but, just the, but that's the sad part, right? No, yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. You know? So it, it, with all of what you have just said, you know, I worry that, look, um, if Lagos is moving this slowly, hmm. what, what, ne what about the rest of Nigeria? But, but there's good news, actually, because um, now I think the government at the federal level hmm. is beginning to um, rethink sports. And they're getting serious about it. Hmm. Do you understand that? So I imagine that, that um, in time, we're all going to get there. What a private investor watching this program now will be thinking is, Okay, so there's a man in the studio who's been there, mm -hmm. who knows what it is like. What, what, how easy is it for a private sector person to get into the sports space um, in Lagos, for instance? It's, it's not difficult at all. Okay. You know, b before we came on, on air, we were talking in the studio and I was saying, mm -hmm. what saddens me the most over the last maybe 10 years mm -hmm. has been the fact that our young, our, our, the younger people are not brave enough. Mm -hmm. Before I got to the government, I never did business with government. But I had a sports marketing and admin and management company that was doing events. I'm sure you've heard of Nigeria Bankers Games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, we, I created that for oh, 1999, really? yes. I before know. I sold off the, the... So, look, there are things to be done. For example, let me even use our first encounter. You came to the office to ask, uh, to thinking you needed certain requirements yeah, yes, to yes. be able to run an event. Yeah. And eventually, by the time you left me, what did, I, what did you go away with? with? that there was no need because people don't have information. Yeah. People don't know what to do next. And people think for everything you want to do or think about, you need government. Mm. But I had never dealt with government before these last four mm. years. Mm. And I was doing events. Yeah. I was creating events. Mm. So my question is, where are the creatives? Where are the guys? The, people are the people, innovators. The innovators, yeah. where are they? Who has any idea about any event? People complain, oh, we don't have enough stadium. The stadium um, ratio uh, globally should be one to one, mi one million to one facility. Mm -hmm. Hey, we have at least in every state, we have one federal government facility. So let's assume we have 36. And I know we have more. Mm -hmm. So, and then let's assume that most states, anyway, we have one state facility in addition to the, um, the federal government facility, mm -hmm. right? So let's assume, just for argument, we have 50 facilities all over Nigeria. 
how many of each facility has one event a year that is not government based? Mm. I did. Oh, don't, don't worry. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. did. When I got in in 2019, only Lagos was doing one event. Apart from, I'm not talking about the house sports. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the major event that people will competitive hit, sport. Competitive sport or that will draw the crowds that yeah, will drive yeah. commerce. Yeah. Only Lagos was doing one a year. Wow. And it wasn't even it was even in the um, in the, the stadium, stadium facility. Yeah, yeah. It's just in Lagos State um, a marathon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So which other event can you even think of off the top of your head that people are doing? None. But I remember when we started, I, I, I mean, this is not to, I just want to give an example. Mm -hmm. When we started Bankers Games, and we grew it to a point, we were broadcasting Bankers Games live, live TV from, um, from, um, from Unilag. We built towers for TV, uh, for TV cameras, um, podiums and all that, and we're broadcasting live. And from then we got all the sponsorships and all that. So, so we drove the commerce, we drove the interest, we drove the the, the, the banks. Mm. And so, so what? So, so my my problem right now, or what I say is a major challenge is first of all, we don't have enough information about what government mm. has done or is mm. doing. Mm. And number two, I, I don't see enough brave people. Everybody is going at the content market now. I, I, yeah, yeah. I think I think just to the earlier point you made about our, our chat yeah. um it was, i think the second the second meeting I okay think. second okay yeah where, where you said that uh, we are going to organize a tennis tournament yeah. and um at the lagos lawn tennis club yes yes and, yes that was it uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and i came to you said can lagos state endorse us and you say you said i said something like why and i was I like said, what for? <laughs> we don't want problems with sponsors and, yeah. and then i said why would you have any problems by the way, this facility you're having the event, is it, um, is it, um, Lagos State. is it owned by Lagos State? I said no. Is it owned by, uh, the players are going to play, are they Lagos State players? I said no. Uh, the sponsors, are they going to be Lagos State government? Uh, I said no. I said, so what, 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 what do you need my investment for? And, and this, and this is so true. I seen a lot of people are at least watching and they're thinking, if we want to do something, um, uh, we're going to run into all kinds of roadblocks with the government and all of that. Do you get? Today, you can actually walk. In. They say that of the federations as well. Yeah. And I'm saying that sometimes there are federations, their government, they're looking for they're looking ideas. For, yes. They're waiting for yes. you. You know, so you walk into the place. There's a process. Yeah. Any any um, facility in Lagos State now, you walk there, people will tell you exactly what to do mm -hmm. to use the facility. Mm -hmm. They will check the calendar. Yeah. I remember we created a, a template then. Yeah. You check the calendar, you see the dates that are free. You fit in your stuff there, and yeah. they tell you exactly what to do. Yeah. And you have it to use. Man. But people don't even want. Where have we, where are the events? You know, I, 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 this it bothers me a lot. Yeah. Where are the events that will fill up the stadium? That will be value-driven events that will yeah. make you and I say, "Oh, there's something happening on Saturday. I want to pay whatever it is to get in to watch this event because yeah. I know I'll be safe and secure. Yeah. I know that I'll have a good time, yeah. and I know that I'll be able to drive out because it's going to be well organized. Yeah. How yeah. many people are coming up with those things? I, I think that it's time to catch our breath. You know, it's been a lot that has happened in the, in the time <laughs> since the program started. Um, you're watching Plus TV Africa, and the program again is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. We're going to take a one minute break and um, keep, go get your, your coffee or, or some water. There's still lots, lots to, to be said, and there's still a lot to be learned. All right, so see you in a minute. Keep the keep the, your 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 TV tuned to Plus TV Africa. <laughs> 